What you doing? I'm the AC, and this is Otaku News Reviews. This time, I'm reviewing Junji Ito's Love Sickness, newest collection of short stories. It came out on April 20th, 2021. However, according to the credits in the back, it was originally published in 2011 as Ito Junji Kesaku Shuyon, Shibito no Koi Wazurai, by Asahi Shimbun Publications. Now, this collection consists of 10 short stories, and the first five are actually what make up the Love Sickness stories. Now, I didn't know Love Sickness was actual multiple stories. The one I was most familiar with is A Boy at the Crossroads because it was in the Junji Ito collections anime. And I liked it, and I thought it was cool, and I thought that's what it was going to be with this, just the one. But there are actually five. They include the beautiful boy at the crossroads, a woman in distress, shadow, screams in the night, and the boy in white. What the love sickness story is actually about is it follows Ryusuke as he returns to his childhood town and all of a sudden he realizes there's this beautiful boy at the crossroads. This town has become known for these crossroads where people go to get their fortunes told by strangers. How it works is apparently they wait at a crossroad and the first person that pops by them they ask for their fortune. Ever since Ruske came back there's been this beautiful boy and he gives them very negative fortunes to these people and they become obsessed with it. So throughout these five chapters the first four involves Ruske coming back first dealing with this um, having a girl become obsessed with him, then the people eventually start to think that Ryusuke is this beautiful boy at the crossroads, and then they become obsessed with him because of that, and then he gets to start seeing people die, and the whole reason all this is happening, he feels like it's because a long time ago, whenever he first had to move, he had a woman approach him at the crossroads asking for her fortune, and him as a child that was mad, just about to move, she asked him what she should do about being pregnant with another man's kid, even though that man already had a wife. And he was mad, it gave her, just pretty much yelled at her, and he thinks that is what caused her to kill herself. Uh, kills her with a blade, and now he's realizing all these people that are dying because of this beautiful boy at the crossroads, they're also dying by slitting their uh, self with a blade. So he's now feeling like this is all his fault for coming back. Not only that, we see stuff like his friend comes to visit, uh, also becomes convinced that it's him or it has something to do with him, and starts to frame him. We also see that a girl that he likes and doesn't want to get too involved with because of the guilt being that the one who killed herself all those years ago was her aunt, this girl named Mitri. She eventually comes in contact with the beautiful boy at the crossroads who tells her that she needs to hate Rusuke because of this. And this of course ultimately leads to death. So what we're seeing this whole time is just Rizuke kind of just dealing with guilt and thinking all oh, this is his fault and no one's really quite sure why. And there's a bunch of other mysteries that I'll get re uh, I don't know, they kind of get resolved but they're still like, is that actually it though? Uh, Midori eventually kind of realizes that, or thinks, uh, this beautiful boy at this crossroad is possibly her cousin. Uh, she thinks it could be uh, her aunt's baby somehow survived. I'm pretty sure that is debunked. What it actually is, is the man that her aunt was uh, having the baby with makes an appearance, ends up <laughs> a part of one of the stories too, with a whole nother woman, a whole nother deal. It happens to a whole nother woman. And we thinking it's his oldest son uh, who ran off whenever uh, that the first woman killed herself. But you know, 
there's still a little mystery to it. That seems the most plausible, so that might be it. Now, the last chapter for the lovesickness stories, the boy in white, it follows an entirely different guy coming to this town. Uh, but now, we see that Ryusuke has become this boy in white. He spent his whole time trying to defeat the beautiful boy at a crossroads, find him, hunt him down, and try to stop him somehow. Well, we don't really see that doing it. Instead, all we see him doing is pretty much having what seems like the entire town's teenage girl population kill themselves and become like ghosts. And every time the beautiful boy appears now, they scream all night long. And Risuke's kind of come back as the boy in white. I don't know if he ever dies or he just kind of takes on this role. He kind of has the same but opposite presence as the other one. But this man shows up just looking for uh, um, something to make him feel better. And he eventually runs in Rusuke, and he tells him, go around telling people's fortunes, and eventually it'll become quiet again. And he's thinking, oh, okay, that means all this will get settled, though this is how we defeat the boy, beautiful boy at the crossroads. But we see that's not really it. There was a couple other people that did the same thing, and we see the ghosts are still around. And when he finally finishes telling all these fortunes he needed to tell, the screams are still happening, but he says there's a quietness inside. He's finally at peace inside. And that's kind of where it ends. We get that one chapter that's kind of like, huh. It was a little bit odd for me. It didn't really seem to fit as much. But at least we know kind of what happens to Ryusuke. It has some kind of payoff. But then again, we also don't get to see what happens to the beautiful boy at Crossroads. He's still there. He's still doing whatever. Um... It's still foggy. <laughs> Nothing really clears up too much. Uh, another thing I'll say, just on the topic of foggy, since I just remembered, uh, it, ever since I got this book, it's been really foggy where I live too. So I'm not saying this book cursed me, but it is a bit suspicious. Mmm, I don't know. Now, the next two stories are also related. It's the strange Chikizuki siblings. There's only two stories, one being Narumi's boyfriend, the other the seance. And what it does is it follows these weird siblings. Their parents have died and they're just, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're just crazy. There seems to be one normal girl, Narumi. And in the first chapter, it's just her. Uh, she runs away from home, plans to kill herself. But then a guy stops her, she saves him until he's sick of it, then he goes to her, their house. Uh, they pretty much play a prank on him until he has a heart attack. Kind of weird, uh, but it's more just an introduction to these weird siblings. <laughs> I mean, they are strange, I give them that. And the room just seems like the most normal, even though it, there seems to be like, I don't know, she, like a normal appearance, but even though we don't really get to it in this, these two, it seems like there's something probably more deep inside that makes her probably more strange or twisted than the rest of them. But there's nothing like too special about them besides just being weird and crazy and liking to kill things. They seem obsessed with killing things even though we don't really see them kill anything. They accidentally give this one guy a heart attack. And then the second one, the oldest brother who's supposed to be taking care of everything, even though they're rich and he doesn't have to work or really take care of anything or do anything, he finds this woman who likes taking picture of the paranormal, looking for spirits, he invites her to her house, um, and then the second oldest brother kind of tricks him into thinking he's possessed by their dad. It's kind of silly, kind of dumb, but they managed to fool... The, this woman, and even though the oldest brother was obviously just doing to, you know, try to hook up with her and do whatever kind of plans he was wanting, turns out she had a boyfriend, so it was off or not. Uh, and then he realizes the brother below him tricked him, and then that's pretty much it. It seemed like there should be a whole bunch more stories related to these siblings. Um, it seems like somewhere Suichi would really fit in. It seemed like these should be his siblings, or he should be part of them. Uh, but yeah, it seems like just another, it seems like there should be a lot more stories of these. So I don't know exactly when these were written, 
uh, I don't know if there's more. I need to look more into it. I don't think there are. But yeah, it, it could probably have its own volume just for stories like this. Kind of like Tomie and stuff like that. But, I don't know. Maybe we'll see more of this. And then that leaves us with three more stories. One being The Mansion of Phantom Pain. This one is kind of intriguing. It's a weird one. Uh, it has similar tone to other Junjito stories. But it's this guy... Uh, gets a new job at this big mansion and apparently their son uh, feels like an immense, very sensitive to pain so much so that it goes beyond his body and kind of just takes over the whole mansion so they have the mansion sealed off they have a bunch of workers that go around and I like, scratch rub do whatever they need to to try to help the pain better and that's just involves them running through the house <laughs> scratching the air or rubbing it, or doing something to try to make them feel better. Eventually, though, they all get locked in. They become obsessed. Uh, the dad dies, and then the mom is taken care of, and the mom locks, is the one who eventually locks them in. They're all trying to get super dedicated. She it eventually turns into, like, I don't know, it was kind of weird. Like, them also kind of being sensitive to him. It's like, all their pain is getting taken by him. They can't feel pain anymore, except for the main character. And so, they're kind of just, you know, being diligent, I guess, and doing their job. But then, when the mom's, like, saying that they get all the fortune and whoever stays and helps and all this stuff, then it turns into a story about greed. And maybe it always was, I missed it, but I don't know. And the, but now, since nobody can feel pain, which is what pain is for and reflexes to tell you when something's wrong, uh, nobody tries to leave until it's too late. And then they just start dying because that's what happens when you start having like cuts and all kinds of stuff that gets infected and it gets gross. And yeah, then they die. The main character eventually, who is also sensitive to the pain, starts taking it in. And he's the one getting feeling all the weird pain everywhere. That's what it makes it seem like it's going to happen when it leaves off. And then it makes me wonder if it was actually them or if it was the mansion itself. And maybe it was a bit of both. Maybe it was just wrong place, wrong person. I don't think that's the same. But that's kind of where that goes. It's, it's an interesting thought. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're trying to say, but it kind of did something. <laughs> the next one is the rib woman. This one was really weird, kind of cool. So it's pretty much about this girl who's just not happy with her body. And she's jealous of her brother's girlfriend because she looks fine. And I guess the whole moral of this is kind of be happy with how you are. I don't know if we was trying to pick a moral for this story, it would be something like that. Because she's just want to have some ribs removed, but... Uh, from the illustration, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. It, she looks normal. But eventually, uh, she realizes her brother's girlfriend is hearing like some strange music that she can't get out of her head. So they go looking for it. They eventually find this woman playing a little, like a lyre. Uh, not really a harp, but a little lyre. And they realize it's made from a rib bone. Odd, okay. Uh, and then eventually, the main character decides to get the ribs out. That's okay, sure. Uh, her brother's boyfriend, brother's girlfriend goes missing, and then she starts hearing the music a lot more, too. Eventually, it leads up to her finding the rib woman looking exactly as her name sounds. Uh, turns out those. The rib bone liar she was playing definitely was a human rib bone. And then it turns out the doctor was helping her. Turns out her brother's girlfriend also got ribs taken out. That's why she looked so good. Like I said, still just look normal. Don't know how getting ribs taken out make anything different. But apparently they thought so. So, hey, whatever. And then, yeah, they just chase them off. That's it. It's... It was kind of supposed to be something that seemed more creepy. Uh, or, I feel like there's more. It's like, hey, uh, don't get ribs removed because a doctor will get into some creepy lady and play music with them. 
Is that the moral? I don't know. And the last one is one of the things I like most about Gigio is his silliness, his com comedic side. It's memories of real poop. And it's only four pages long. It's at the very end. And it's really strong. I mean that for real and sarcastically. But literally it's just about this kid who sees some realistic looking fake poop and uh, debates buying it, eventually buys it, regrets buying it. That's it. <laughs> four pages of that. Uh, and eventually he realizes he kind of just loses it. It's like Starting, okay, just, that's it, that's, that's the end of it. Love Sickness, definitely the highlight of this. Um, and then the rest of it, like, of course, it's a collection, so I expected there to be a lot. Uh, the fact that Love Sickness had five stories on its own was a surprise, it was really cool. Uh, and then, I, you know, they needed more filler. Uh, definitely worth reading, especially if you're a Junji Ito fan. Um, especially the color. A very soft color for something creepy like this, but I guess it's supposed to kind of blend in with the fog, too. So, it was... It's a nice... It looks nice. Uh, but compared to other ones, uh, Shiver's kind of a bluish, too. This one's kind of a greenish, but... It is nice. Definitely worth reading. Some weird ones. Um... The siblings one seems like just a taste of something that should be a lot more. Kind of awkward that there's only two stories. I don't know. Uh, the fact that this was published as it said uh, originally. I don't know if it was published with all these stories in the collection or just mainly love sickness. Um, interesting to know what the Japanese version would be like. But nah, I don't have that copy. I only have the English one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, there's more Junji Ito collections and stories coming out. So, Viz is really getting on it with Publishers and Junji Ito because they know I want them. I mean, they know a lot of people want them, but I feel like they're doing it for me because uh, that's what I want. But yeah, there's two more coming out in 2021, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, let me know. Have you read this? Uh, what was your favorite part? It was Love Sickness, the actual five of Love Sickness, the highlight for you too. Uh, some of them are a little iffy. <laughs> you can probably tell just by the way I describe them. But. I mean, overall, it's definitely Junjito and definitely stuff I like, so I can't wait for more. But that is it for this Otaku News Reviews. Go ahead and let me know what you thought. If you like this, go ahead and give it a like if you want to see more of my reviews as they come out. Go ahead and subscribe you can see when I do all that. But until next time, thank you. I'm DAC, and bye.